Two weeks ago, a Russian missile struck an old satellite, creating thousands of pieces of space debris that will whiz around Earth at hypersonic speeds for centuries to come. This cloud of microbullets is now threatening the International Space Station. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that NASA called off a spacewalk on Tuesday, November 30th because of a cloud of space debris that was created when Russia blew up an old satellite as part of a missile test. Any piece of that cloud of space debris can puncture an astronaut's suit or damage the International Space Station. The space station and its crew of seven have been at increased risk from fast-moving pieces of debris since Russia blew up the satellite two weeks ago. Two U.S. astronauts were scheduled to replace a damaged antenna on the outside of the space station, but late on Monday night, NASA says it learned that a piece of orbiting debris might come dangerously close. SpaceX founder Elon Musk also announced on Tuesday that the company had to shift some Starlink satellite orbits to reduce the probability of collision. He added that the space station and SpaceX Dragon capsules have micrometeorite shields for ultra-high-velocity impact absorption, but spacesuits do not. Hence, there is a higher risk for spacewalks. The Russian missile strike generated thousands of pieces of space junk that are now hurtling around the Earth at around 27,400 kilometers per hour, much faster than the speed of a bullet. New details have emerged about last week's frightening incident when a freshly docked Russian module started firing its thrusters, causing the International Space Station to flip backwards one and a half times during a dramatic 47-minute tug of war. Here are the details. Gizmodo reports that NASA has provided new information about the accident the International Space Station suffered on Thursday, July 29th. The incident happened some three hours after Russia's Nauka module docked to the space station. Russian crew members were working to integrate the module when its thrusters suddenly fired, trying to pull the module away from a space station it was securely docked to. The worst part was that Nauka was configured so that it would receive commands only from a ground station in Russia, and the next pass over Russia was 70 minutes away. Unable to disable Nauka's thrusters, Russian controllers counteracted the momentum by firing thrusters attached to the Zvezda service module. Fearing this might not be enough, they also fired thrusters on a Progress cargo ship docked to the station. This 15-minute tug-of-war finally stopped when Naoka's thrusters suddenly cut out for reasons that are still unclear. With attitude control regained, the flight controllers were able to right the ship. NASA maintains that the crew of seven was never in any danger, but Harvard-Smithsonian astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell told Gizmodo this was one of the more serious incidents in the 24-year history of the ISS. The loss of attitude control, he said, risks breakup of the entire structure. Russia has conducted a controversial missile test in space, with consequences for the International Space Station. Here's what you need to know. A Russian anti-satellite missile test blew up one of its own satellites on Monday, November 15th, according to the BBC, resulting in 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris and causing astronauts on the International Space Station to shelter in capsules for safety. Political reports that Russia did not warn the U.S. about the test in advance, and subsequently, the seven-member crew of the ISS, which included three Russian cosmonauts, was instructed to shelter inside the Soyuz and Dragon crew capsules for two hours, according to NASA. The space station is now passing through or near the debris cloud from Cosmos 1408 every 90 minutes, though there is no need to shelter beyond the second and third passes. More broadly, the BBC says space debris is a rapidly worsening situation, with roughly a million to one to ten centimeter objects floating in uncontrolled orbit of Earth, and Time magazine pointing out that much of it is moving at over 17,000 miles per hour. Part of the explanation for this is that Russia is not the first country to shoot down a satellite in this way, with India, China, and the U.S. also having done so previously. However, the BBC also points out that space junk is a much broader phenomenon, arising from 64 years of activity above our heads, and this was emphasized in May this year, when NASA released photos of a small hole that had been punched through the ISS's Canadarm2 robotic arm by an unknown piece of debris. NASA said the robotic arm worked normally despite the damage, but the ISS also had to perform emergency maneuvers three times in a year before that in order to avoid separate collisions, according to Science Alert, and unfortunately, while larger pieces of debris can be tracked to help with this process, millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Chinese and Russian warships have teamed up to encircle Japan. Here's what you need to know. A joint naval exercise between China and Russia has completed a near full circle of Japan, reinforcing tensions in the region, according to CNN. 
The Chinese warships included a Type 55 destroyer, a Type 55D destroyer, and two Type 54A frigates. While the Russian ships included two Udaloi class destroyers, two Sirichoi class corvettes, and a Marshall Nidilin class ship, according to the Drive. The exercises have brought the charge of hypocrisy because China regularly condemns similar exercises by the U.S. in the Taiwan Strait as destabilizing. Two weeks ago, for instance, the Chinese military's Eastern Theater Command suggested a U.S. and Canadian transit could seriously jeopardize peace and stability in the Strait, according to CNN. Both those ships and now the Chinese and Russian vessels remained in international waters, but notably the Chinese and Russian ships took a route through the Tsugaru Strait, which is only around 12 miles wide at its narrowest point. That places them well within the area that can be claimed by a country under international law, albeit Japan only actually claims areas three miles from either shore. The move also represents the first time Chinese and Russian naval ships have sailed the Tsugaru Strait together, according to Japan's Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary cited by Yahoo, and thus can be seen as a further escalation of tensions in a region where military activity has been growing steadily in recent months. In addition to the aforementioned U.S. passage through the Taiwan Strait earlier this month, a large international fleet made up of aircraft carriers from the U.S. and U.K., a helicopter carrier from Japan, and smaller ships from the Netherlands, Canada, and New Zealand conducted exercises together off the southwest coast of the Japanese prefecture of Okinawa. Shortly after that, the United Kingdom carrier Strike Group 21 passed through the Luzon Strait on its way to Singapore, and the New Zealand Navy's HMNZS Takaha traveled alongside it in the South China Sea, while separately the UK's HMS Richmond made a rare voyage by a non-US ship through the Taiwan Strait, according to France 24. Those exercises came in the wake of China sending around 150 aircraft into Taiwan's air defense zone over a four-day period beginning on October 1st, according to Reuters, and it's widely suggested that the American-led movements in the area can be seen as an effort to contain China. However, there is also major technological buildup going on in the background to all of this. The U.S.-based Center for Strategic and International Studies, for instance, recently released new satellite photos showing that China's new aircraft carrier is nearing completion. Images of the carrier in Shanghai's Jiangnan shipyard reveal that the new carrier has slots for three separate plane-launching catapult systems, making it much more effective than China's existing two carriers, which use simple deck ramps to launch their aircraft. These older carriers can only launch fighter-type jets with light bomb loads, while the new carrier should be able to launch and catch heavier fixed-wing planes like the U.S.'s vital E-2 Hawkeye radar platform. But China is not the only country enhancing its military capacity, with even the militarily cautious Japan revealing last year that it was developing an indigenous next-generation fighter jet to counter China's J-20. The new fighter will replace the Mitsubishi F-2, which is due to be retired in the mid-2030s. Defense News reported the unnamed fighter, dubbed the F-3, will be optimized for air dominance, stealthy, and interoperable with the U.S. military. The F-3 would carry more missiles than a U.S. F-35, and in addition, a report in Forbes stated the F-3 is also likely to carry cruise missiles, such as the ASM-3 anti-ship missile and the sea and land target joint strike missile. With provocative defense packs being signed in the background to all of this military growth, it's hard to see how things get any less tense in the near future. Ukraine's intelligence chief says Russia is preparing to invade Ukraine, and Moscow created a refugee crisis in Poland to make it harder for Europe to fight back. Here are the details. Bloomberg reports that the U.S. military is preparing for a possible invasion of Ukraine by Russia around January next year. The news outlet says multiple sources say the Pentagon has shared intelligence, with its allies showing a buildup of Russian troops and artillery that can quickly turn into a rapid, large-scale push into Ukraine from multiple locations, if President Vladimir Putin decided to invade. Satellite images and other information shows that around 100 Russian battalion tactical groups, comprised of around 100,000 troops, could quickly push into Ukraine from Crimea, the Russian border, and via Belarus. Bloomberg sources also said Moscow called up tens of thousands of reservists on a scale unprecedented in post-Soviet times. Such reservists would be used to occupy ground taken by the battalions. Ukraine's intelligence chief told the Military Times that Russia is preparing for an attack by the end of January and that the attack would involve airstrikes, amphibious assaults, and an incursion through Belarus. 
EU member nations, including Poland, have also accused Russia of encouraging a refugee crisis as its ally, Belarus, funnels migrants toward the EU. Ukraine says the refugee crisis was created by Russia to destabilize the EU in preparation for an invasion. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.